Hi, this is Sean at OMU Energy. Today, we're gonna to show you how to swap and upgrade the 12 volt battery in your Tesla Model Y. This will apply to all Model Ys. I know it's a, it's a new car, so they're all the same so far, which is awesome, makes it easy. And the Model Y is a very easy battery to swap. You don't need to get into uh, the back seat uh, like you do with the Model 3. So you, you can do it from everything from the front for the swap. So you only need to do is a power off on the MCU, and then you're going to disassemble the front to get access to the battery, disconnect, uh, do that safely, of course, after we remove the, the, the safety plug, and then uh, reconnect, secure, and you'll, you'll be good to go. So we recommend upgrading the battery in, in your EV to lithium as soon as you can. Uh, it's okay to let the, the first lead acid battery they give you at the factory to, to go through its paces and, and, and die off. But as soon as it does, make sure you're upgrading when you replace. You're gonna lose weight, more efficient, better for the environment, a little better performance. And overall, it's just a really good idea to, as soon as you can, replace the 12 volt battery in your Tesla, any of them, especially the Model Y behind me, with a lithium battery. And you can get those from us at omu.com and uh, we're, we're happy to help and, and provide those to you as quickly as we can. The only tools you need to do the swap in your Model Y is gonna be a 10 millimeter wrench. I try to use a uh, cordless drill with a 10 mil, like with a socket attachment, and that makes it really easy. Um, but if you, if you have that, or if you don't, this is such a easy swap, you don't really need it, and you'll still need a, a 10 millimeter wrench to, to loosen the, the lugs themselves. In terms of safety, some of the things you want to keep in mind are with a electric car, especially like with the Teslas, you've got a, a DC to DC converter, which brings 12 volts live out of the big battery pack. So this car has a 350 volt battery pack or 400 volt, depending on which model you have. And that battery gets converted down in voltage to 12 volts through a DC to DC converter. That means that even if you don't have a 12 volt battery attached, there is the potential that the 12 volt system is still energized. That could lead to uh, unexpected behavior and that could lead to some shorts and sparking and that kind of stuff. So to avoid all of that with these cars, we wanna make sure we remove the safety disconnect loop. Also for our own safety, and uh, we're gonna to wanna to wear gloves because you could have, especially with the original battery, it's lead acid, Sometimes they spew lead, and some, or not lead, sometimes they spew acid. And so you could have an acid residue on the battery itself. That's, that's very likely to be the case. But beyond that, if you have a battery that, that's exploded, sometimes they let out this horrible sulfur smell that, that smells like rotten eggs and, and stinks up your whole house if you parked in the garage. And uh, in that case, you're gonna have a lot of, of, of uh, acid around that area. So you definitely wanna wear gloves just overall safety practice, good idea to wear gloves. Uh, you get some that are insulated for electrically insulated because you're gonna be working around uh, terminals and potentially live energy. The other thing you should always do is wear safety glasses. Same reason, you've got acid, uh, you've got potential to get acid near in or around your eyes. So let's wear safety glasses to, to keep ourselves safe. All right, the things we need to do before we get started are power off the car, make sure the driver's door is open, and make sure the frunk is open. The reason you wanna have the frunk open, you gotta have access, and if you didn't open it before powering off, when you do open it, it's gonna power the car right back on. So make sure you have the frunk open before you power off. Second, the door, you wanna make sure that's open because the window needs to know, uh, the vehicle needs to know what position the door is in. When you have it totally powered off, you don't wanna open, you can't open the door um, without losing your window calibration. The other piece of that is make sure you don't close the door while it's powered off, or you could also lose your window calibration. And then you gotta go through a process of recalibrating it, and that's kind of a pain. So make sure that the front is open, make sure the, passenger, the driver's door is open, and then you're gonna go in the center screen to power off. To do that, push the, cor the little car in the corner, then you're gonna go to safety and security, then power off, and it's gonna ask you to confirm, and then again, power off. Now the car is powered off, but that's kind of a soft power off until we actually do what we're gonna do up front. It's not totally gonna to have all the computers shut down, but for now the MCU is powered down. So let's uh, go up front and get started. Up front, we're just gonna go through the steps 
remove this plastic cover. It's really easy to do. It just clips in. You kind of get into the corner, lift up. This one was a little loose already, but lift it up on one side, then go to the other side, do the same thing, unclasp it. Then you can just lift that up and put that to the side. Now that we've got that cover out of the way, we're going to first detach the high voltage service loop. Doing this will make sure that the DC to DC converter is not able to get power from the high voltage pack, which will prevent you from having live 12 volt terminals when you don't expect them to be live. That'll also make sure that every computer in the car gets powered down totally and resets, which is important because if you have a uh, replace 12 volt battery soon uh, error or warning on your screen, we want to make sure that gets totally reset. To make sure it gets totally reset, we're going to disconnect the high voltage loop and we're also going to disconnect the 12 volt battery. Uh, of course, in, since we're doing the swap, we're going to be disconnecting the 12 volt battery. Um, so we just got to make sure we also do the loop. So that's going to be over here on the Model Y and it has a small connector that you can disconnect to remove it. So you pull the red outwards or, or slide the red upwards on its little track and then push down there and slide it out. You'll hear the clicking. That clicking is the high voltage battery pack contactor opening up, which means now the high voltage battery pack is basically offline in terms of the rest of the car. Since we haven't disconnected the 12 volt battery, the car isn't totally asleep yet. You'll still hear fans and pumps and whatever is running will continue to run. Uh, only, the, only the high voltage battery pack has been disconnected at this point. So our next step is to actually do the 12 volt swap. So getting in here, you've got a couple things. We're going to remove this bracket on the top and we're going to disconnect this venting plug on the side. With your new uh, lithium battery, you don't need to vent. It's a, it's a sealed system and it doesn't off gas at all. Uh, and so you don't need to do any venting plug on that. So you'll just disconnect that plug and let it, let it kind of just hang out on the side there. Uh, if in the future someday you do put one of these junky batteries back in, then you could use that again. Uh, no reason to get rid of it. Just, just let it hang out. It doesn't do much. So once we've got that out of the way, then we'll take the top bracket off and we'll loosen the negative lug and loosen the positive lug. To take the bracket off, I use a 10 millimeter socket to drill. Just loosen that all the way up. Then lift up, rotate, and it'll just come right out. To loosen your lugs, start with the negative. Yeah, on some model Ys, I would imagine Tesla will put a cover over these, but maybe not because this one doesn't have it and this one's brand new. So. If they don't put a cover here, then it's really critical to be mindful that when you're taking this or you're loosening this lug, that you don't accidentally touch the negative lug to the wrench at the same time as, as allowing the wrench to touch the positive side over there. If you do, especially if you do it on this side right here, this part that's nub kind of sticking up, uh, you're going to cause an arc. And if you do it on this side, you're actually going to blow the fuse that sits inside this black body. And we have ex had customers experience that already, so be careful of that. So go ahead and loosen. The best way to make sure you don't make contact with that lug is to wear insulated gloves and keep your hand on that side of the wrench while you go. And that will make sure that even if, if you bump into that, there's no, there's no short that's going to happen with the wrench. Once you've got that side loosened up, then go ahead and disconnect it. Always start with the negative because the negative lug is grounded to the chassis, which means that any metal in the vehicle is also connected to that negative lug. So if you leave the negative lug attached and you take the positive off and then the positive touches something metal in the car, it actually will create a short with the 12 volt battery. So always take the, 12 volt, uh, the negative lug off first and then now we will loosen and remove the positive lug. If you do somehow blow that fuse, uh, at this point, I think the only source for that fuse is Tesla. I haven't seen um, uh, third party sourcing on that yet. It'll probably come along. Um, other automakers may use the same kind of fused lug connector there. But uh, yeah, just be careful that you don't blow it. But if you do, 
just contact Tesla for, for another fuse. Now this battery comes out. It's pretty heavy, so use the handle and just work it out. Ugh. The two batteries, we're gonna do a quick weight comparison side by side. The big lead honker is right there. It's about 29 pounds, four ounces. We'll throw that off to the side. Then we'll open up our OMU lithium. Inside, you'll find a couple of adapters. They're just lead spacers that allow the clamps to, to clamp onto something soft and also space out the terminals so that they are SAE sized because the currently we do JIS terminals on these, which are a little smaller. So let's weigh that battery. And you see, I'm talking about eight pounds, eight ounces. So that's a huge savings. You're over 20 pounds of weight loss by just swapping this battery, which is really awesome. All right, we'll bring in our new OMU lithium battery. Set that down on the tray. Then grab your bracket. Reconnect the top. Rotate it down and aim the bolts into the spot you'll see for it. Then go ahead and tighten that up. If you're using a impact driver or something like this, just make sure you've got your torque setting somewhere kind of middle or low. That'll get it nice and snug. You want to make sure that the battery's in there and it doesn't slide around too much or really at all. Now that it's there, we are going to start reconnecting. The first connection we'll make is the positive. So we'll take the cover off the positive now. It's always good to leave those on until the last, until the last minute. So with this lug, we're gonna bring in our spacer. You're gonna have two, actually. Show those to you. You get a little smaller one and a little bigger one. Make sure that you're putting the larger one on the positive side, then push it down so it's flush with the top. Careful not to drop them or lose them because it's kind of hard to reach stuff down inside of this vehicle and uh, they're, not, they're not magnetic, so they won't, they won't pull out uh, easily with like a magnetic wand or something. Uh, so we put the positive on, then go ahead and connect your lug cable there and tighten. So right now, the big safety concern would be hitting the wrench across the terminals. Important is, uh, important note is to leave the cap on your negative and also keep your hand between the wrench and the terminal. Of course, with the cap on there, you're not going to be able to short it, but it's always good practice to just keep your, your gloved hand in between the wrench and the terminal, just in case. So now that that's disconnect, uh, now that that's connected, the next step is critical. We gotta make sure we reconnect the high voltage, uh, the high voltage line. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect the safety loop, and then we'll make the final connection with the negative. All right, reconnecting the safety loop is easy. You're just going to push it back in. It'll only go back in one way. Make sure you hear the click. Then make sure you slide the red tab back in. That'll lock that in place. When you first reconnect it, you shouldn't hear any clicks, you shouldn't hear any noises. Uh, because the now that the battery pack has that connected, it is able to close its contactors, but it should not and will not close its contactors until it first has 12 volt power again. So right now, until you reconnect your 12 volt battery, it is still, the car is still offline. So we're gonna make this last connection for the negative uh, to the battery. All right, making the last connection to the negative, go ahead and take your cover off and then put your smaller lead spacer on there, push it down so it's flush at the top, and we're gonna reconnect here. When you're bringing in this lug, be careful not to like allow it to bang there first without being ready for it to seat in properly. And just the reason for that is because it's gonna, a, a decent amount of current is gonna first flow when this gets reconnected because everything in the car is gonna get repowered all at the same time. And so there's a little bit of current that goes and you're gonna see little arcs and sparks when it first touches. So the best way to avoid and mitigate that and to reduce it is to just line this up nice, uh, nicely with the where it's going and then push it down quickly. If you do that, you really won't see any arcs. And that's, that's nice because arcs and sparks are never, are never good when you're dealing with electricity. So now we've got it in place. As soon as you connect it, you're gonna start to hear pumps and things start to come back to life. 
you may hear the main battery contactor close. All of that is a good sign that you've got that you've got 12 volt power again. Now we'll snug that tight. Again, make sure you are not allowing this wrench to touch across the terminals. You can use a gloved hand to protect that from happening. Once that's nice and secure, you've got both sides connected. Only thing left is to put the cover back on and you're good to go. All right, so we'll bring this cover back in. It'll line up side to side pretty easily. One thing that's important to remember here that a lot of people forget is that this tag should be exposed. So it's designed to sit here and kind of flap over like that. So let that happen. It, it looks good, I think, but either way, it's a good safety uh, thing that you make sure that that stays exposed. Once you've got everything lined up, you'll hear it click into place as you push down across the top, and the sides, and the back. Right here in the center, there, there are clips, but as you push, you're gonna see this flex and it's gonna be darn near impossible to get them to connect. Don't worry too much about those ones. Just make sure that the side and the top are connected and you're good to go. All right, now you've got everything reconnected, new battery in, you should be good to go. Your Tesla should be better than ever. Uh, may take a minute to reboot all the computers. Put your foot on the brake if, if it doesn't just reboot on its own and you'll see everything come back to life. If you had an alert, it should be cleared. If not, contact us and we'll, we'll help troubleshoot that. Uh, but the big things are just make sure you reconnected the high voltage loop and that you spent a little bit of time with the, both the high voltage loop disconnected and the 12 volt battery disconnected to allow all the computers to reset. Thank you for watching. To get support from us, come to our website at omu.com and we've got a live chat there where we'll be happy to, to, to field questions and help you troubleshoot whatever you're, whatever you're looking at doing and, and answer anything we can. And, or also we've got a, a troubleshooting page at omu.com slash support where you can find installation guides, videos, and frequently asked questions. Enjoy your vehicle and thank you so much for watching.